welcome to the first of my last minute revision style lessons. This last minute revision lesson covers a whole of unit one for Edexcel IGCSE Biology. The point of these lessons is to go through the main points that you have to learn for your exams. We will be looking at the characteristics of living organisms and the variety of living organisms, including plants, animals, fungi, productista and prokaryotes, as well as discussing viruses. First of all, we'll look at the eight characteristics of life. I teach my students to remember this as Mr. Schreng. M is for movement, which is changing position. You cannot say moving from place to place, as you would be using the same part of the word move to give the definition of movement. The first R is for respiration, which is the release of energy as ATP from food, usually glucose. Please do not say making energy, as energy cannot be created or destroyed. It can just be changed from one form to another. This energy is released through a series of chemical or metabolic reactions going on inside your cells. The main organelle of respiration is the mitochondrion. S is for sensitivity, which is responding to changes in the surroundings. In other words, responding to a stimulus. H is for homeostasis, which is the control of a constant internal environment. For example, keeping our body temperature at 37 degrees C or maintaining blood glucose at a steady level. R is for reproduction, which is the production of new organisms. In other words, producing offspring, whether this is a bacterium dividing into two by binary fission or a horse giving birth to a foal. E is for excretion, and this is the removal of metabolic waste from the body. For example, breathing out carbon dioxide, which is excretion from the lungs, or urinating. Nutrition is the providing of food for the organism. Heterotrophs absorb their food in some way, such as us absorbing digested food from the ileum, or a mushroom feeding saprophytically. Autotrophs, such as green plants, make their own glucose by photosynthesis but they still have to absorb their minerals from the soil by active transport through the root hair cells. G, for growth, is a permanent increase in number or size of cells. In addition, all living organisms contain nucleic acids, DNA, and all living organisms can die. Living organisms are classified into five groups or kingdoms, each of which has certain characteristics you need to learn. Eukaryotes are organisms which have cells containing a nucleus with a distinct membrane. Eukaryotic organisms can be multicellular or single-celled. Plants, animals, fungi and protectists are all eukaryotes. Bacteria are prokaryotes. Animals are multicellular organisms. Their cells do not contain chloroplasts and they are not able to carry out photosynthesis. The cells have no cell walls. They usually have nervous coordination and are able to move from one place to another. They often store carbohydrate as glycogen. We store glycogen in our liver and muscles. Examples of animals include mammals such as us, and insects such as the housefly and the mosquito. Plants are also multicellular. Their cells contain chloroplasts, so they are able to carry out photosynthesis, and the chloroplasts contain chlorophyll, which is a green pigment to absorb sunlight energy for photosynthesis. Their cells have cellulose cell walls for support and structure. And they store their carbohydrates as starch, which is a complex carbohydrate, and also as sucrose, which is how it is transported in the phloem. Examples of plants include flowering plants that produce fruit, such as this strawberry plant, cereals such as maize, and herbaceous legumes such as peas or beans. Fungi are saprophytic which means they feed by excreting digestive enzymes onto food and then absorbing the digestive products, normally through their thread-like hyphae. 
Their cells do not contain chloroplasts, so they are not able to carry out photosynthesis. Their cells are joined together to form threads called hyphae. Hyphae are a little bit like tiny roots. They contain many nuclei because they are made from many cells. The hyphae threads are organised into a tangled mycelium. Cell walls are made from chitin, which is a modified carbohydrate. They usually store their carbohydrates as glycogen, like animals. Examples include mucor, which are made up of hyphae, and they are the tiny black pin head mould that you often see on bread. And then there's yeast, which is a unicellular organism. In other words, it's single-celled. And we use this fungus widely in baking and making alcohol. Productista are basically everything that doesn't fit into another kingdom, so they're often called the dustbin group. They are usually aquatic, and they are microscopic single-celled or unicellular organisms, which can either have animal-like characteristics, like this amoeba with its outer cell membrane, or plant-like characteristics, including chloroplasts, like this chlorella, and some algae. A pathogenic example of a productista is the plasmodium parasite, which causes malaria. It is passed from person to person via the female Anopheles mosquito when she bites somebody to get the protein for her eggs. Bacteria belong to the kingdom prokaryotes, which means before a true nucleus. They're made from microscopic single cells, so they're unicellular. They have cell walls made of peptidoglycan, which is a mixture of carbohydrates and protein. They also have a cell membrane, a cytoplasm, and plasmids, which are small circles of DNA. They may also have a protective slime capsule around the outside of the cell, and they may use flagella to move along. Their cells do not contain a nucleus, but they do have a small piece of circular DNA instead, which is known as a bacterial chromosome. Some bacteria can carry out photosynthesis, but most are saprophytes, living off other living or dead organisms. Examples of bacteria include Lactobacillus bulgaricus, which is a rod-shaped bacterium used in the production of yoghurt from milk, and Pneumococcus, which is a spherical bacterium that causes pneumonia. Viruses are small particles, much smaller than bacteria. They are not made from cells and they're not regarded as living because they can't car carry out the eight characteristics of life. They are totally parasitic and reproduce inside host cells, but they are not capable of replicating on their own. They infect every type of living organism and they come in a wide variety of shapes and sizes. They have no cellular structure, but they have a protein coat and contain either DNA or RNA. Examples include the tab tobacco mosaic virus that discolours the leaves of tobacco plants by preventing the formation of chloroplasts, the influenza or flu virus, and the HIV virus that causes AIDS, and of course, the SARS virus that causes COVID-19. You need to learn the structure of viruses. They have an envelope around the outside, which is used to gain entry into the host cells using the envelope proteins. The capsid is a protein coat and is used to protect the genetic information and give the virus structure. The DNA or RNA, which is a different type of nucleic acid, contains the code for building new viruses when the virus invades the host cell. Finally, we need to look at pathogens. So what is a pathogen? It is an organism that causes disease. This includes fungi, such as athlete's foot, which causes red soreness between the toes. And if you don't wash your socks or if you put your feet into your trainers without socks, you are more likely to catch it due to the spores sitting inside the hot, sweaty trainer. And then there's ringworm, which is not a worm, but a fungus, and it causes small round sores on the skin. Then there's bacteria, such as salmonella, which causes food poisoning. You've got productista, which can cause amoebic dysentery, or the plasmodium, which causes malaria. 
And then, of course, there's those viruses such as HIV and the SARS virus that causes COVID-19. Finally, don't forget the buzzwords. It's really important that you know what these all mean and you must try to use them in your exam answers.